Hi, uh, so my name is John Savile, and what I'm going to talk about in this little webinar is application virtualization. Um, a lot of organizations today are looking at updating their desktop environment, um, looking at VDI, um, presentation virtualization, and when we start looking at redefining our desktop, for example with Windows 7, the applications are really one of the, the biggest factors that affects the success of our upgrade. Um, deploying an operating system, maintaining user state, data, there's a lot of proven technologies around that. But application compatibility, application to application coexistence, and just how do we get the applications out to the users can be very challenging. So, why do we even have application virtualization? Um, essentially what we have about application virtualization is, let's say we have some, some network location. And for any program we have, it's made up of a number of cabinet files usually. Multiple cabinet files that contain certain blocks of functionality. When I as an end user want to run that program, essentially what has to happen is, on my computer, it pulls down one of those cabinet files, runs a setup, that may take 10, 15 seconds, I then pull down the next cabinet file, run another lot of setup, and each of those setups is updating the registry. Uh, I'm writing to the local file system. I might be registering DLLs, services, fonts, etc., etc. So that takes a lot of time. So from the first time the user maybe tries to use that application, something like Office, I might be waiting 10 minutes before I can actually be productive with Office. So we need something else. I mean, there's great solutions here like SCCM, a group policy to deploy the applications but it's still slow. And if you imagine saying like VDI, a virtual desktop infrastructure, where I'm dynamically creating that user's environment when they want to log on, I can't wait half an hour while each of their applications is installed. They need to be available straight away. One of the other problems we're actually facing today is, in, in the good old days, um, when I will add, applications didn't really use a registry. Uh, they didn't use shared DLLs. Each application wrote to its own folder on the file system with INI files that were specific to the application. There wasn't a lot of sharing. Well, now what we have is we have this common configuration store in the registry, and we have a lot of shared dynamic link libraries. So applications can take advantage of functionality exposed through other applications and services. So this is all great, except we start to get into coexistence problems. Because one application has written to this registry key and written these dynamic link libraries, maybe another version of the application tries to overwrite those dynamic link libraries, tries to write different registry keys, and they won't coexist. Another challenge, well, even if I do install all this software, this guy's getting very bloated. I mean, my Windows XP OS, I install Office, I install Adobe, I install WinZip, I install 20, 30 applications. Well, all of those things are registering DLLs, adding services, adding keys to the run in the registry. So when I start this machine up, it has to trawl for all of that, which means it's a slower experience. And even when I uninstall things, no matter what we hear, generally there's stuff left behind. So my OS that was clean and pristine gets muddy very, very quickly. So What's the solution? What we're actually looking at is virtualizing the applications so they're not actually physically installed on the operating system. So virtualization is always about abstracting. We're abstracting one thing from another. Um, server virtualization is we're abstracting the operating system from the hardware. With application virtualization, we're abstracting the application from the OS. So they're not directly tied together anymore. And that gives us a lot of advantages. If we're not actually installing the app, it means it's very easy to deploy those apps. If we're just pulling them down from a network location, this will make more sense in a second, it's very, very fast deployment. And getting your applications out very, very quickly. They're still available anywhere, as I cache these applications locally in one big file on my file system. Um, it's actually cheaper. I mean, when I start virtualizing applications, app-to-app -app coexistence problems go away because they can't see each other. So whereas in the past I may have had a conflict between Access 97 and Access 2007, for example, 
If I virtualize them, they don't see each other, so that goes away. So, how does it actually work? So when we virtualize an application, what we actually have is, on the client side, we have a virtual environment, kind of like a bubble. And that used to be called System Guard, you may have heard of it as System Guard, but it's this virtual environment. And the application runs, uh, let's say Word, runs within this virtual environment, this bubble. And that's completely sandboxed to that application. Now within that guy, I have virtual file system, I have virtual registry, virtual services, fonts, etc, etc. And if I have other virtualized applications, they run in their own virtual environments. So let's say, I don't know, Adobe. It has its own virtual registry. It has its own virtual file system. And all the files that are specific to the applications are stored in their virtual file systems. They're not storing individual DLLs on the file system of the actual operating system. And essentially, there's like walls between these guys. They can't actually communicate with each other. They're protected as like, imagine like a firewall, a Chinese, whatever. They cannot communicate. We have the real machines registry and file system over here which these applications can read from, but they cannot write to. So virtualized applications can't actually make any changes to the underlying operating system. So it's keeping this guy clean and pristine. So uh, that, that sounds great. Uh, virtualized applications, all these virtual file system, registry, service, etc. layers. But, but how does this actually work? Well, there's a number of phases we actually have to do. Um, to use virtualized applications. So the first thing we have to do is obviously get our application in a format suitable um, for application virtualization. And this is known as sequencing. And essentially all we do is we have a machine and this is a clean operating system. It's, it, it's shiny, there's nothing on it. It's just the OS, no other software, no antivirus, nothing, completely clean. The best way to actually do this, guys, is to actually use a virtual machine. So create a virtual machine, install the OS, service pack, whatever, just so it, it, it's up to date, and then snapshot it. So it's a clean, pristine OS. Uh, I'd actually create a dummy printer and dub, dummy ODBC driver in this guy as well. Only because, and the reason I say that is, if I just take a clean, pristine operating system, and then an application that I virtualize installs an ODBC connection or a printer driver, all that key of the registry becomes part of the virtualized application, which will conflict with the underlying operating system's registry. So if we create a dummy ODBC and dummy printer connection, those keys already exist before we install our application, so we'll only track what's new and modified for ODBC and printers. So anyway, clean pristine OS. At this point, I actually installed the AppV sequence.